Hello folks, I just wanted to make a video about Blight Desert Online. The prices for the online shop have uh, been made known now after the closed beta 2, and people are not too thrilled. Uh, not to the fact that it exists, I think most people knew that it was going to exist. It was, you know, in Korea, and it's a buy-to-play game. You only pay for like a flat, I think it's $30 is the base to get in. Uh, and then you can play it all you want after that. So I, I think most reasonable people, and whenever, by the way, whenever I, I say something like, everyone knew it was going to have a cash shop, I mean every reasonable person knew it was going to have a cash shop. So yes, everyone knew there was going to be a cash shop. We didn't know the prices, or at least what they were going to be in America. Now we know. So uh, there's two main points of contention that folks seem to have. Uh, the one that I'm most familiar with is the clothing, the outfits, making your character look different. And a full suit that includes uh, like a torso piece, pants, uh, if, if applicable, a cloak you, uh, in some cases or most cases perhaps, uh, shoes, hat, and a skin for your weapon costs $32 American. $32 for a costume. There are buffs with it, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but $32 for something that is mostly, mostly a costume. There's also dyes in the game that you have to buy. I'm not as familiar with this, so I could be mistaken uh, on this. And if I am mistaken about anything we talk about today, make sure to correct me in the, the comments below. But the dyes are... One use, one time use, and RNG to an extent. Now, when I first heard people complaining about this, I thought you just bought a dye box and it could be any color from white to black and anything in between. From what I could tell looking at the shop, it's not that way. It's RNG to a range. So I can buy a red dye box and it will be a color of a shade of red. Still crappy. Uh, I personally hate anything where you buy it and it's random. Even in like real life stuff where you buy the box and it's got, ooh, the mystery figure, you know, you it's a, I don't know, random, I don't know, World of Warcraft figure or something like that. Uh, but you don't know what it is until you open it. I hate that kind of stuff personally. So that's very annoying. It's even worse because if you want all of your armor to match and you want the same color of red or black or whatever, you have to keep buying them over and over and hope the RNG gods smile upon you, which is pretty ridiculous. Uh, and I forget how much the dyes are offhand. Uh, pets, you can also buy pets. I forget how much those are uh, in the game, but I think they were a little pricey as well. But again, I don't recall off the top of my head. The ones I mostly want to focus on, though, is the skins, because that's the one I'm, I'm most familiar with. First things first, as I mentioned, the outfits do have stats. It's like plus experience, like plus 10% experience, minus 10% death penalty. One of them is weird. Like you can jump 0.5 meters higher or something like that. Uh, things like that. So, of course, because it's the internet, the first thing people said was, oh, no, it's pay to win. Uh, Black Desert Online is going to be pay to win. It's not pay to win. Uh, from what I've seen and everything I've read it doesn't look like the stats that you get from the outfits are game breaking. When I say game, when I say play to win, I think that you're getting a benefit which allows you to beat other players in PvP or beat PvE content such as raids, etc., easier than someone else who doesn't pay or is able to get this gear in a much, much lower amount of time. So, for example, let's say there's an item in-game that's the best PvP weapon in the game. Let's say you can earn that weapon in-game, but it takes, you know, some outrageous amount of time, 60 hours of grinding to get this game, or get this weapon, or you can buy it. I would consider that pay-to-win. If it, if it only took, like, five-ish, six hours to earn it in-game, somewhere in that time frame then it's not so much. Obviously ambiguous, or a little bit ambiguous, but you, you kind of get what I'm saying. Getting 1% extra on you know a weapon or armor isn't going to make a big difference. It's not going to, it's not pay to win. You, in other words, you don't have to pay money in order to succeed or to do well in the game. 
other things that would be example like additional inventory space, uh, additional bank space, you know, furniture for your house that doesn't do anything. Uh, those things obviously not pay to win. So from what I've seen, it's not pay to win. Now some people argue that the pets are almost necessary because they like pick items up for you. I think you get other small bonuses. Again, personally, I haven't seen anything that really says, oh, you have to have a pet. Uh, I actually bought one in game with, they like, gave us some some free pearls, which is basically the the equivalent. That's what you buy with your money is you buy pearls. And then in, in game, you use those pearls to buy this cash shop stuff. Uh, I have a pet and it was definitely nice having it auto loot. But it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, the other thing, uh, there were some other little things like you could buy furniture, I think, that, you know, added to your stats. But again, I I personally didn't see anything that was going to be breaking. Now, obviously, this opens the door for them to say, hmm, well, we were giving 10% experience, but we just added this new, this new outfit. And we want people to buy it. So we're going to make it plus 15% experience. And we're going to add plus two attack. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. And you could see kind of the, the slippery slope that you run into, uh, possibly could run into with something like that. But at the, at the time of this recording, and to my understanding and to my research, it doesn't look like it's going to be pay to win. However, I will say that you can't stop, you, you can't keep calling something cosmetic the minute it gives you a stat. If it, this piece of armor that I have to buy gives me. 1% bonus experience, it's no longer a cosmetic item, or it's not a purely cosmetic item if you want to be uh, really, uh, really specific. It's no longer a purely cosmetic item. And a lot of people complain, well, you know, these you know these bonuses, they don't matter. They're very minor. Uh, it's it's inconsequential. Well, in that case, just, just take the stats off then. Just make them truly cosmetic items where they give you no bonus whatsoever. But anyway, I digress a little bit there. So now the counter argument that I've heard to this is it doesn't matter. You can get to max level. You can do everything in the game that you want to do. Trade skills, leveling, raiding, PVP. You can do all of that without spending any money. So therefore, it doesn't matter. That's not really true regardless but let's let's uh, let's hit a few points here. The number one point I have a problem with, and again, this is something I've heard repeatedly, and I've not heard anybody who's been on the more defensive end of this decision counter argue, give a counter argument to this. So I'm presuming that it's mostly true, and I've heard it a lot from different people, is that if you don't buy any of these outfits, that you, like the armor in the game that you get gives you very minor graphical changes. Uh, you still pretty much look like the outfit you started the game with uh, at level one, except there's a few pieces of armor kind of slapped on. And I'm like level 15 or so, and so far that holds to be true. Most of my armor is just makes like very small, uh, minor changes to how I already looked. And my understanding is that's the way it is all the way to max. So you could be a level 55 and you're going to look like somebody who's level 10 because your armor hasn't really changed all that much. That's a big problem. I have a big problem with that. And, you know, yes, there are those people out there who do not care at all what their character looks like. They're, the armor could look like, you know, bright flashing pink and purple with, you know, My Little Pony all over. In fact, some people might even want that. But it could have it be the most god awful looking armor of all time. They're going to wear, wear it because it's plus one gooder over some armor that looks really good because all they care about is stats and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're one of those people, you need to understand that there's a lot of people. And I mean, a lot of people who don't want that part of progressing. And I'm one, and I'm not somebody who like, you know, spends two hours in the character creator or, you know, goes crazy over new outfits and whatnot, but it does matter. Progression, you progress in games like this and RPGs on multiple levels. You know, you get more hit points, you have more, you know, you can cast more spells, you can create, cast better spells. Uh, graphically, a lot of times, spells will increase. EverQuest was really good about that, right? When you're starting casting level one spells, 
and the particle effects were pretty weak. But by the time you get to level 60, there was more particle effects and it really looked like a fireworks show. So it was really cool to see that progressive progression in multiple ways. And one of those ways that matters to a lot of people is seeing your character grow and that they look more like a like a badass, basically. So people, when you, when they see you walking through town, they're like, oh man, that guy's max level. He's got you know armor from the dark dungeons of Drakenach or whatever the hell uh, they're, they're wearing. You want to stand out. You want to look, you know, relatively cool, being able to customize yourself or like I say, just getting whatever armor drops. You want to see yourself self progress. And it helps, of course, if you start off at low levels looking like like raggedy armor that you just picked up. You look like standard issue militia. And then by the end, you're looking like the the commander wearing the ultimate armor or whatever. So you need to understand visually upgrading as you go is part of is part of progression for a lot of people and to take that away just so that you can sell that progression to people is pretty crappy and that's not to say that they couldn't sell any and i'm going to make a few comparisons the blade and soul here uh, i realize the games aren't exactly the same in fact there's a pretty good they're probably uh, more different than they are alike but there are definitely some very key points that they're very similar on. And it's the game I've been playing most recently, so I'm most familiar with it. And it's the one I can compare to uh, most knowledgeably. So you look at something like Blade and Soul. And in Blade and Soul, your armor, you don't... I don't want to get into a side discussion, but long story short, your quote-unquote armor has literally no visual effect whatsoever. You can change all the armor you want all day and all night. Doesn't matter. It'll never change your appearance. However, you do get outfits and outfits are purely uh, except for some like PVP type stuff. Uh, and that's not even PVP stat. It just enables you to PVP. There's no actual stats on any armor that are, or any of the outfits. I should say it's purely cosmetic and there may be some uh, that have some kind of effects. I've not seen them yet. But uh, all the outfits, so we'll just say all the outfits, purely a visual thing, purely cosmetic. Now, the game is free to play. Blade and Soul is free to play, so you could go right now and download it without paying a dime. As you progress through the game, you get outfits. You get different outfits. You get them from quests. You can buy them with in-game currency. You can uh, grind uh, against certain factions and get special outfits. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm gonna, I'm probably, I'm showing you right now. You guys, trust me, I'm gonna have to edit this later. But uh, right now, I'm showing you my Blade and Soul character, and just showing you the various different outfits that you can get. Again, just from questing, just from spending in-game tokens, things like that. Uh, it's a pretty wide variety, and they look good. Like they don't look like oh, we just hashed you know threw this together uh, in a hurry because they're not going to have to pay for it. It actually looks really good. And yes, there are some outfits that you have to purchase, and I'll try to remember to show those right now. Uh, now you and you can buy them uh, with real life money. The one of the main differences here though is the prices. The prices for the outfits cost anywhere from $10 to $15. The most expensive outfit I've seen was $15. Now, I know there was like a Valentine's bundle that was like $25 or something. It was pretty expensive. But it, it came with like an outfit and other stuff as well. It didn't just have the outfit. But purely outfits, the most expensive one I've seen was $15, I believe. Uh, but but you can get some 10. I think there are some even lower than 10, but I, I don't recall exactly, but I think it's around 10. Now, they are character bound. So if you buy a costume in Blade and Soul, it doesn't, it's not account bound. And that would mean like if I roll up an alt I would ha and wanted that same costume, I'd have to buy it again, which kind of sucks. I can kind of see why they do it with free to play. And again, I don't want to get too much into like why it sucks or why. Yeah, they shouldn't because this isn't really about blade and soul, but I'm just using it purely as a comparison here. But anyway, uh, that's the only negative I really have with it. So yes, 10 to $15 for an outfit, but the game gives you plenty of outfits. So if you don't want to spend any money, 
uh, then you can look different than everybody else because there's enough variety that, uh, that, you know, you can look different because some of them are rare and some people aren't going to waste their time or I want to say waste their time because I've done it myself. They're not going to use their time farming these special outfits uh, like, you know, <clears throat> I did. But the last thing to talk about on far as the Blade and Soul angle, you can also buy these outfits with in-game currency. Now, you have to use quite a bit of it and you have to like convert the in-game currency to Hongmu, what's called Hongmoon coins. It's a little confusing and I don't understand how it works. But long story short, you actually can buy them with in-game currency. Uh, again, it's going to take some, you know, probably grinding and selling some of your money and all that, but you can do it. Excuse me, now Blade, with Black Desert Online, I don't believe that's possible at all. Again, if, the, if I'm incorrect on that, definitely correct me. But I don't believe there's a way to get those, those uh, outfits without in some way, shape, or form spending real life money it just it you know so overall it just feels like a dirty money grab to me if the game was free to play it would still feel like a dirty money grab but the fact that the the game is thirty dollars at minimum thirty dollars and they have the call the balls to charge thirty two dollars for a single outfit is mind-blowing to me uh, like i I'm really curious their thought process. I'm wondering if they didn't just price it high during the closed beta test to see pe if people freaked out over it. And I think they got the react. If that's what they thought was going to happen, then I think their expectations were met because on the Black Desert Online uh, subreddit, like half, if not more, of the main topics seem to have been talking about the outrageous prices in the. Uh, the shop so you know and another argument i want to talk about is people say but they have to make money they can't just take that 30 dollar box box fee we'll call it a box fee even though we're all buying it digitally you know what i mean they can't survive on just a 30 dollar box fee and again most people aren't going to disagree with you there that's not the point we all know they have to make money and we all know there's some some pains that usually go along with that, if you do, especially if you don't want to spend any money whatsoever, that you just get to suck it up and some things are going to be inconvenient or you're not going to have that really sweet skin for your weapon or your armor or, you know, whatever. But $35 is insane. Like, I... And I'm sure, I mean, I would hope they did research and figured out, okay, well, we could make it $10, but, what you know, but, you know... Would it mean three times as many people would buy armor? I think so. My opinion is yes. I can tell you right now, with $35 for an outfit, I will not buy anything. Like, that is, it's completely out. I, there's no way in hell I'm paying more. Keep in mind, again, the suit is $32. The game is $30. You're spending more for a single suit than the entire entry fee for the game. There is no way in hell I'm going to buy a suit for $32. That's insane. And of course you see the, oh, well, maybe you have to get a second shift, you know, working at McDonald's. This, I mean, that's such a, I don't know why I shouldn't even have to address that. So because it's such an idiotic argument, there's plenty of working adults like myself who could easily afford, and this is not some kind of weird humble brag, but could easily afford a $32 suit without worrying too much about it. But I'm not going to I'm not going to spend that kind of money. It's ridiculous. You flip around and look at Heroes of the Storm. That's a game I've put at least 200 hours into, probably more than that. I've probably spent off the cuff 150 to 200, well, I wouldn't say 200. Around $150 I've spent on that game. Because I like it so much and I've put tons and tons of hours into it. But all the purchases I've made typically were inexpensive uh you know the most expensive thing i would buy would be like 15 dollars, which came with like a brand new hero and a skin and i could get that hero cheaper if i just waited but i'm like no nah, i just came out i'm just going to indulge i want that and i want to get the new skin that comes with it and it's like these small purchases here and there that have added up the same thing with an mmo if i really got into black desert online and played it a lot 
and there's a really cool suit that was 10 bucks, maybe 15. I would go, eh, you know what? I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll buy that. Uh, it's, I'll, I'll, I'll splurge and wear it. 30, 32, no chance in hell. No chance. If there was like a skin in Heroes of the Storm that was 30 bucks, I don't care how much I love that game. There's no way I'm going to spend that much. It is ludicrous to spend that much for uh, just an outfit. That's nuts to me. So, yes, we want them to make money, but not not money gouging. Like, And the problem here is this. And I think this is one thing that, quite frankly, the subreddit and even worse, the forums. Oh, God. The forums, the official Black Desert forums are a cesspool of fanboyism. And I don't I think one thing that these people don't understand is when people bring this up, it's not necessarily to say, oh, this game sucks, I'm not gonna play it. It's coming from a perspective of I want this the game to succeed. I want it to be popular, I want it to be around a while. And to do that, you need to do things that are gonna make you money and don't give you a bad reputation and get people playing because we want people to play with. Because we again, we want the game to be successful. Even if I wasn't interested in it, I am of the opinion that the more successful MMOs that are out there, the better. Because that gives us a wide variety of, of MMOs instead of just a bunch of WoW knockoffs, right? So even if I decided, you know what, Black Desert's not really up my alley, I want it to succeed because it's so different than many, many other MMOs that are out there. And I want to see, I want companies and I want investors to see, hey, you can do something different and it's going to succeed. You don't just have to follow the cookie cutter wow formula to, in order to make it. So I want this game to succeed in the West. Uh, in the West specifically, uh, to make people you know want to create them here for us, and not just say, oh well, that specific market is only popular in e in you know in um, in Asia or Europe or whatnot. But so we're saying this from a position of wanting the game to do good, right? We're not trying to slag the game just for fun and say, oh, this game sucks and I hope it fails. We want it to succeed, and to do that, <laughs> they need to make money. And I am of the strong opinion that they're not <laughs> they're not going to make a lot of money on these outfits. Furthermore, they're going to piss people off, and they're not even going to be interested. I um I do a lot on Twitter, and I've got a column that's set up that's just the search results from Black Desert Online. And I saw several people say, "Oh, I just saw the cash shop stuff. I was going to get the game. Now I'm not interested at all." So not only are you going to lose sales because people aren't going to buy, pay that much? Or there's nowhere near as many people are going to pay that much as they would if it was $10 to $15. But you also have the other side where people are like, oh, is that what type of game this is? Where they're going to like really gouge you for any kind of minor, minor uh, graphical upgrade? Then I'm not going to buy the box at all. I'm not going to play at all. And... That sucks because the game is really cool. Like I've really been enjoying it so far. It's cryptic. Well, not cryptic, but it's very complicated and there's a lot of moving parts, but that's, I think that's one of the reasons why it's awesome. And I hate hearing that. I hate hearing people say that. And I hate, like, I hate that this whole news has always just, or just immediately turned me sour to the game. Like as soon as I heard it, it just, it, it made me feel like, oh, God, like they really are just going to try to milk this. Like they're just going to like throw it out there and hope there's a few hardcore fans and a few whales that play the game. And, you know, they're the ones who are going to buy all these $30 outfits. And they're the ones who spend like hundred, hundreds of dollars on games. Uh, you know, the same people who spend like hundreds of dollars on Candy Crush somehow. Uh, and I, I really hope that's not the case. The, you know. I forget the name, D-A-U-M. I like to call them Dam, but I don't know if that's correct. I just like saying Dam, but I'm going to call them Dam because that's fun to say. They are the ones who are doing the, uh, the like the localization, I guess. And they seem to be very receptive to feedback. And I have zero doubt that they've been reading all about the, the backlash to this. And... It's one of those things where 
they're in a nasty position because they're in between the company that made the game, which is uh, a Pearl Abyss, is that right? I think, and the Western audience, and you know they're kind of at the mercy of the developers because there's some things they just flat out can't change. For example, the gender lock on classes. That's probably not something that they can change, right? So, but they do try to obviously make uh, changes to it appeals more to a Western audience and yada, yada, yada. But it it feels like one of those things that they're going to kind of avoid because I feel like, I feel like that price is something that, the Korea the developer said and said, well, if you're not going to have pay to win items, because apparently in Korea, you, there actually are pay to win items. There are items that you can buy that give you a significant leg up over other players. And I get the impression that, that, um, Dayum said, Hey, look, Western audiences hate pay to win. They absolutely loathe pay to win. We can't have that kind of stuff in here. And I get the impression, again, this is complete speculation on my part. I don't have any inside info. I didn't read any leaks or anything like that. This is just the impression I get that Pearl Abyss came back and said, okay, well, we still need to make money. And the pay to win items were our main money maker. So now we got to like charge all this money for this other stuff. On top of that, and this is another like really shady, just flat out shitty thing that they did. There's a quest in the game that gives you a pet. As I mentioned before, the pets do the auto looting for you, things like that. There's some other small benefits I think you get from it. But you actually get a pet in game uh, so you can get one for free. They nerfed that quest, and I actually did that quest today. And it even shows you in the quest that you're going to get the pet, but you don't actually get it. And that's just a way to force you to buy the pet. That's really shitty. Like, that's really shitty. You should want people to spend money because they love the game so much. They they want to enhance the experience, not to get the bare bones stuff. Again, look at Blade and the Soul. I get plenty of cool outfits in that game just from playing the game uh, as I would want to. But, you know, I've actually looked through because I do enjoy it so much. I actually have looked at some of those outfits that were like 10 to 15. I thought, mm, you know what? If I get to max level, I actually might want these because these look really, really cool and I want to stand out. So I actually might buy one of these because I like the game so much. If it was such that they didn't give you any outfits at all and you look like level one Padawan even at max level, I would be less inclined to buy it just kind of out of spite. Just because I feel like, you know what, I I feel like I'm giving in to them being greedy so I'm not even going to buy it just out of spite. But I feel like in Blade and Soul, I get enough variety that that's not, that's not a, an issue. And I feel like, for the most part, it feels like the free-to-play and uh, like things that cost money are, are balanced fairly well. Especially, again, because it's a free-to-play game. There's no charge in, in purchasing it. But And like I said, that's what even hurts more for, for, uh, for uh, Black Desert is that you actually have to pay to get the box. So, yeah, it's it's pretty sad. I really hope they change it. I'd hate for this game to be dead on arrival. Um, I'm just really afraid that it this is going to scare people off because I've already seen news sites advertising or gaming news sites talking about you know, Bla- Black Desert Online reveals its outrageous cash shop prices. And the problem with that, too, is, and we're going to wrap up here, the problem with that, too, is people tend to hear that. That becomes their impression of the game forever. Even if later on they're like, oh, you know what? Those prices were ridiculous. We've dropped them to 15, 10 to $15. The highest is 15 Most of them are 10 uh, We were just experimenting, you know, whatever excuse they want to use. Mo- a lot of people are still going to have the impression that the costumes are very expensive because they don't really keep up with all that stuff. People tend to hold on to that first bit of information. Uh, And it's either because they didn't get an update, like maybe they didn't see the news article that came up later that said they changed them back, if there's one at all, or they saw it and read it, and it still bounced right out of their head. 
I mean, there's plenty of you know experiments and stuff to show that's that's true. But that's my concern too, because again, I want this game to succeed. So I really hope they back off on this. I hope they get the prices more reasonable. Honestly, I would like for them to entertain the idea of doing what again <laughs> Blade and Soul does, where you can have a member, like you can have a you can pay like I think it's right about like twelve to fifteen dollars a month for premium membership, and you get little benefits like you get additional go- uh, money when you kill creatures, you get um, a wardrobe so it's easier to manage your your various outfits, you get a little bit of additional space. Excuse me, little things like that just for being a premium member. I would rather them do something like that. And make it so that, okay, if you're a premium member, you get X amount of pearls per month, like 400 pearls. So if I really want one of those outfits, I can just stay with my premium, get all the other benefits and get some pearls on the side. And after a couple months, I'll save up and buy one of those, those outfits. But you know, that's, I don't even know if that's even on the table. Probably not. Uh, Who knows? Again, the the developers do seem to be very open to feedback. Uh, I heard an interview where basically they had a guy, there was a guy streaming Black Desert online. They were watching him and I guess he brought up some points and the guy messaged him and said, Hey, let's do an interview like right on the spot. So they do seem to be very, very aware of what's going on and very much listening and wanting to be in communication with the community. So that's great. I think that bodes well. I hope, Maybe that means we'll see outfits at a more reasonable price. I hope they also add some free pets and free outfits in there. Again, just to make you look a little different. Um, because I, I feel like it's kind of crappy to completely lock visual progression behind a paywall. But uh, anyway, I think I've, I've made my, my thoughts on the whole thing uh, well known. Uh, I still plan to play it. I actually bought like the crazy Conqueror's $100 package just for the hell of it. Um, So I will be playing it at release and I will be doing videos on it. Shameless self-promotion. But uh, yeah, I mean this, you know, this is the only problem I've had with the game so far, really. uh, Other than just being blown away by how much stuff there is, which is not really a negative. But uh, anyway, I'll stop rambling now. Thank you guys for listening. I definitely want to hear your feedback uh, in the comments below. Uh, Obviously, don't be a douche. Uh, If you either agree or disagree, if somebody disagrees with me in the comments, don't be a douche to them. Uh, So, yeah, don't be a douche. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.